Good morning. Welcome to the Episcopal Churches in Lowell's online Sunday service of morning prayer this Epiphany season. Please bring your own concerns and joys with you as we gather for worship. Prayers this day come from the Church of England's book, Daily Prayer, and also from the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer. Even though vaccines against the coronavirus are becoming available, the danger of contagion still exists. For everyone's safety, St. Anne's and St. John's remain closed for in-person public worship. Information about when and how we can regather safely inside our church buildings will be published on our websites. Please continue to be vigilant and follow safe practices as we work and pray to end this pandemic. I'm pleased to announce that today our preacher will be the Reverend Deacon Valerie Court. Let's take a moment to calm ourselves and to prepare for today's worship. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praises in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory, God of glory, thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the fame, flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kedesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading on this Sunday of the baptism of Jesus is from the 19th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, unto what then were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance 
telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. The third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. The response to the Gospel portion today is the Song of the Blessed. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world. Great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. 
Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. In the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, our gospel reveals an epiphany, a revelation, a deeper understanding of Jesus. Perhaps no one other than John the Baptist and Jesus himself was likely to have even noticed that Jesus was being baptized. In those days, John the Baptist was the one who was making the splash. He was the one attracting crowds in the wilderness. John offered a baptism of repentance, urging those who were looking for salvation from the corrupt and oppressive rulers of their day to look first at themselves, to repent of their own sins, to share what they had, clothing, food, with others who had less or none. We really don't know much about Jesus from the time he was about his father's business as a 12-year-old on a visit to Jerusalem. When Jesus joined others at the River Jordan, he probably appeared as just one among many people who was baptized by his cousin John. But we are told that something really big happened. What happened after his baptism is phenomenal. That is when the heavens opened. The Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, and a voice from heaven said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. But Despite how we might imagine the voice of God booming, impossible to miss, unbelievably loud, there appears to be no indication that anyone other than Jesus heard anything. Nevertheless, it was enough. It was enough to carry Jesus into the wilderness. It was enough to uphold him in the face of the accuser's temptations, and enough to launch the ministry that is the reason that you and I are here today. And it set the pattern for the way God and Jesus communicated, not always through big happenings or spectacles, but through prayer and listening. This morning's gospel offers a suggestion that the clearest manifestations of God's power and presence often come to us, not in grand gestures or bold accomplishments, or anything that we control. Instead, sometimes the clearest manifestations of God's power and his presence come to us when we pause and when we pray and pay attention. 
No one else may have heard God's proclamation that Jesus was his son, the beloved with whom God was well pleased. But through prayerful communion with God, his father, Jesus did. So what can that mean for us today, some 2,000 years later? One of the promises I made at my ordination to the diaconate is to look for the face of Christ in all others and to be ready to help and serve those in need. Bishop Gates addressed all of the deacons taking vows last June, and he said, and I quote, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. I find similarity in that vow and the one which we will renew today. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? We agree as followers of Jesus Christ that we will with God's help. And how do we receive God's help? by pausing, praying, listening, and paying attention. As an elementary school teacher, we discuss the differences between listening and paying attention, and there are several. We can be confident in God's help to guide us as we seek to serve Christ in the many, many ways that we have been called and are being called and will be called. We are God's beloved, baptized in Christ and marked as his own forever. This is the good news. Amen.
it is the custom across the Episcopal Church when there are no baptisms on a day like today that we should renew our own baptismal covenant, which is what we will now do. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestows upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our intercessions for this first Sunday in the Epiphany season are taken from the Book of Daily Prayer. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the Lord that the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. that the church may discover again that unity, which is the Father's will. Let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> that the nations of the world may seek after the ways that make for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. That the whole creation groaning in travail may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God, let us pray to the Lord. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory, let us pray to the Lord. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of Almighty God. I invite your individual prayers at this time in your various places of watching, remembering please all those who struggle with COVID-19, those who struggle with depression, those who are in economic trouble, and those who are victims of systematic racism.
Eternal God, you are our beginning and our end. Bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and now made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The collect for the baptism of our Lord. Our Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And now let us, in whatever language you wish and in whatever form, say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. <clears throat> And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. In the prayer of St. John Chrysostom, Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen.